let us take the discussion further for this reading which we were doing for demography. <clears throat> and we have reached that part where uh, authors are asking, is the country prepared for demographic change? So one thing is true that when you're talking about the benefits of the Indian demographic changes, there are a few benefits also. So what are the benefits? Uh, one, because uh, uh, the population is expanding. So this is uh, the there is a wide scope for augmented economic growth. Yes. So and our working age population is also bulging. So uh, the per capita incomes are increasing and hence there is a wide scope for growth. One. Secondly, that this is also serving as the huge market. So the aggregate demand is also getting increased. So those are the benefits of the demographic change. So let me just write a few points for you. Benefits. of Indian demographic changes. Of Indian demographic changes. One, there is a wide scope for augmented for augmented economic growth. <clears throat> and uh, they also serve as a huge market, huge, huge consumer market. So uh, when there is a huge consumer market, of course, the aggregate demand is also going to increase, which will help in uh, increasing economic so as a huge consumer market okay like in good challenges be here there are few challenges as well so one of the challenge is that, uh, um, is the country properly educated? <clears throat> so are, have we properly employed this working age population? So on the educational and the employment fronts, we are lacking. So although our working age population is increasing, it means that we have this demographic dividend, but have we been able to make them skilled have been we have we been able to make them employable? That is the question. So those are the challenges. So I'll talk about a few challenges out here. Challenges. So you will need to be completing the sentences yourself. I'll just write a few points here. So given the nature of the demographic change that although our working age population is increasing, but we have not been able to make them skilled, we have not been able to give them proper education, we have not been able to give all of them proper employment. So those are the challenge, right? So just having large population is not enough. So given the nature. demographic change serious problems exist on educational and employment fronts. On educational and employment fronts. Uh, so most of the uh, population, most of the adult, uh, a, a huge part in case of the, of the adult population is not properly educated. They do not have enough skills. So if they do not have enough skills, then how can we employ them? 
that is the problem so just having large labor force is not enough you have to convert this labor force into a workforce as well so have we have we been able to convert this labor force into workforce no right so <clears throat> the bulk of so this is not if the ec can the you will have to write the bulk of current adults are poorly educated and low skilled So that's the question. That is, if they are poorly educated and low skilled, how can you expect them to have the proper employment? That's the problem. So you, the productivity of the labor force is going to be dependent upon how educated and skilled your labor force is. And you can't just say that you have enough labor force, but what is that labor force doing? Is that employable? Has you can have? Uh, are you able to convert that labor force into the workforce? That's the question. Right. So the question which is important is that if you look at the literacy rates, literacy rates are increasing, but the productivity of the labor force is not increasing. The skill sets are not increasing. That is the problem. So please write. So although literacy rates, The literacy rates are increasing. But the education and skill levels of the adult population are far from desirable, right? So, I mean, don't you think that the problem with the country is that it is facing a rapidly increasing population? And, and within that rapidly increasing population, there is a rapidly increasing aging population. That aging population is going to become a dependent population. They are not going to work. And as far as the working population is concerned, we have not been able to employ them properly. So that is the problem which is coming. There is a serious challenge in the sense that... Uh, <clears throat> Serious challenge in terms of rapidly aging population on one hand. and increasing unemployment on the other and unskilled labor force. So this is the one problem. <clears throat> this is uh, what your one problem is. Okay. Then <clears throat> the thing is that uh, uh, when you've been working throughout your life, then when you get old, you become rich. And if you get old before becoming rich, that's the problem. And that is a problem which India is facing right now. Uh, 
So 7% of the population of the country has reached 65 years and above age. And the country is not yet fully developed. So that is the another problem which we are facing. Uh, so it means that there is a huge segment of the population which is not living in comfort. We don't provide comfort. This is a problem. So, and UN projections, they're also saying, yeah, there is a limit to what the working age population can bulge. And after some time, around 2040, the population, the, the, the working age population is going to shrink. Right? Then what will you do? So you have the demographic window only for some time period. You do not have the demographic window forever. So that is the another problem. Right? Second beta. Second challenge. So the bulge. In the working age population, right, will start shrinking after 2040, right, after 2040. Uh, this is as per studies, you can say, this is as per UN studies. So what they have also written in the reading is that uh, between 2005 and their, their UN projections were that between 2005 and 2050, there is only a 2% rise in the working age population. But if you look at the elderly population, that has that will be increasing from 13%. That will be increasing by 13% from 2005 to 2050. So what are you going to do? There's a huge proportional increase in the elderly population. And there is a huge, uh, sorry, very less increase in the working age population. So the, the dependency ratios are going to increase a lot. Uh, so both uh, countries such as India and China, they will prematurely develop into the aging societies. This is what UN projections are, and uh, in in if you if you look at uh, Korea for example, South Korea for example, you'll find this that uh, they have reaped the demographic dividend before getting old. So in our country, people have got old before getting rich. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So you might write points from the reading also here. I just written the main point. So you need to describe this with a few more uh, points from the reading. The another problem is that, yes, social, th there is an economic progress which is happening in the country. There is an increase in GDP. Yes. But having said that, we do not find that the benefits of this progress have been equally distributed among all the classes. All these socially uh, dis disadvantaged groups as well. Uh, so, so there is an evidence of an increasing income and health inequalities across the groups. That is an another challenge. So idea should be when the economic progress is happening, then all parts of the society, all groups of the society, they should be equally benefited, but this is not happening. So please write social. progress and economic growth benefits in India are also not equally distributed
across population groups, right? Uh, so the income and the health inequalities, they are increasing in the country. So if the people's income are not going to increase much, so how can the consumption opportunities will increase? The consumption opportunities will not increase. How will the aggregate demand will increase? How will, in case if aggregate demand is not going to increase, how economic growth is going to happen? So those are the problems, right? Uh, and they also say this that they have given you the uh, this uh, this example that uh, it, for economic growth you need capital accumulation. For capital accumulation, this the the source is savings, right? So if you look at <clears throat> the household savings. They peaked in, uh, I mean, they, they are saying this uh, um, in 2011-12, household savings were sitting around 22.8% of GDP. And they have started falling to 21.9% of GDP in 2012-2013. So they are saying that in case of the household savings are going to decrease, how can it fund capital accumulation? If capital accumulation is not going to come, how this will be creating the opportunities for economic growth? And then they also give the reason why household savings might be falling. So they are saying this that uh, um, because uh, your uh, your uh, they have to make the expenditures for the health, and those are out of pocket expenses. So their their, their budget has completely uh, gone topsy turvy down. What they say is that uh, they will have to make huge expenditures on food and health. So there is little which is left for the savings. So unless the country is going to do something in order to crush this income and health inequalities across the groups, we will not be able to develop. You can't be dependent only on rich people for their savings to be converted into capital accumulation. In case that there is a huge part of the population which is poor, if they will also start saving a lot, they will be, they, those aggregate savings will increase in the economy and hence they will be the source for capital accumulation and hence the economic growth is going to increase. So that is what the idea which they are going to put across. So that is the main point. So you will have to write alongside this from the reading, right? So I'll talk about a few more challenges in the next class and we'll take up the discussion further. Thank you, Vita.